I will talk about another dietary pattern, the Nordic dietary pattern, which we have much less data than, for instance, the Mediterranean diet. So, so this is more a, a future, also future field of research. To start with, uh, regarding the program, the sponsors of this uh, program for this uh, conference, I have no uh, conflicts of interest or, or received any support of any of those uh, partners. And uh, regarding commercial interest, I uh, have overall little conflicts of interest. I received some, some honoraria from, from uh, Dairy Council UK. <coughs> So to start with, then, uh, overall, what is a healthy Nordic diet? Sorry, I think I... <coughs> wrong button. Yeah. So that was the first. <coughs> this is my outline of the talk. And, and um, just to define what a healthy Nordic diet is, and uh, I will mainly talk about uh, pre-diabetic stage, the influence of, of a healthy Nordic diet on metabolic syndrome and pre-diabetes. <coughs> basically because there are no studies on, in patients with diabetes. And I focus this talk on, on presenting data from, that's for okay. presenting data from uh, intervention trials mainly. Can you see this one? Yeah. So overall, Nordic diet or ND as I abbreviate it, um, it's a traditional uh, local foods, traditional Nordic foods consu consumed in this uh, Nordic region, in Northern Europe. And overall, it's high in fruits, vegetable, high fiber legumes, and uh, mainly low fat dairy, dairy products, fatty fish, and also uh, whole grain fibrous cereals such as rye, barley, and oats. So not so much wheat, and, uh, but also some almonds and hazelnuts. To start with, it, as I said, it was, there are no studies on diabetes prevention testing this, di this diet, but since the Finnish diabetes prevention study that was conducted in Finland, and in it's, it's the diets provided are not that far from the, the diets that, that I will show here, it's, it's uh, basically Nordic foods that were used, and there's uh, accordance with the dietary recommendations, the Nordic dietary, uh, dietary re recommendations. So wh why eat Nordic foods? So, well, one, it has been argued that, that if you're eating f foods you're familiar with in, th in that region, that might be easier to adhere to, to foods that you're familiar with and grow grown up with uh, uh, as compared to, to eating foods that are more exotic or coming from other cultures. Uh, and um, there might be specific health, health effects of certain foods uh, in the Nordic, Nordic foods. For instance, rye, rapeseed oil, salmon, cabbage, barley, that, that we could um, have benefit from in, in a healthy diet. So there are a few trials, and, and the, 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 the trials that have been conducted have been quite similar. They have using similar types of foods and a similar dietary compositions, all uh, prudent diets uh, in line with the international and Nordic recommendations. Nor diet study, I will talk, mention cis diet study and the study. Uh, and and um, these diets are also inspired by the Mediterranean diets and also the DASH diets and portfolio diets, especially the Swedish study we did. We, we were inspired by the portfolio diet with the idea to having a lot of different uh, potentially beneficial components, food components that have 
could, uh, could improve cardiometabolic uh, <laughs> risk. So the Nordike study was a Swedish study that was the first uh, study where, where we tried to look at the whole diet as such, a whole Nordic diet, a healthy Nordic diet, diet as we de define it here. Uh, um, and it was a six-week study, so it's a short-term study, but all the foods were provided to the subjects. So it's a very highly controlled study, very uh, ambitious study in that sense. And, and we want to see what happens if you actually eat this food rather than just giving the advice. And we want to study uh, the effects on, on cardiometabolic risk factors uh, as compared to a, to a diet, habitual diet, uh, Nordic diet, habitual control diet uh, in overweight subjects with elevated blood lipids. And the food uh, in this diet, <clears throat> and also in the, in the other trials mainly, or this was rather plant-based diet, high, high in fibers from vegetables, and the typical Nordic uh, vegetables and fruits, apples, pear, for instance, uh, blueberry, lingonberries are also quite typically uh, used in Sweden and grown in, 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 in not only in Sweden, the whole Nordic, uh, in Finland, Norway. Denmark, Iceland, uh, and uh, also root vegetables, potato, spinach, and uh, also beans and green peas are, are, are good sources of protein. And cereals, as I mentioned, um, more towards uh, rye, uh, barley, and oats rather than wheat. And rapeseed oil was the main uh, fat source, which was high in sat unsaturated fat, as yes, both uh, N6 and N3 PUFAs and also monounsaturated fatty acids, and also some nuts. And the fatty fish, typically uh, found in, 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 in Nordic uh, seas. And, uh, uh, and, but also the diets were lower in red meats, uh, mainly contained in white meats, some, some moderate amounts of white meats. And uh, in this study was quite uh, low or moderate in, in dairy products and mainly included low fat milk and low fat cheese. So, this was a parallel study with 88 subjects randomized for six weeks, and all, as I said, all uh, foods were provided. Uh, and this was an ad libitum diet where, you, where uh, you could eat as much as you wanted. So it was not the energy restriction or another uh, calorie restriction. And uh, th this shows the diet before and after six weeks. And I just want to show here briefly that you have, in the control group, you see very little significant changes at all, very little change. And that was, of course, the, the point with uh, having a control group that it does not change. However, in, in the in the Nordic diet group, you can see a slight increase in protein, uh, carbohydrates, slight increase, mainly fiber-rich carbohydrates. As we can see, a quite large increase in dietary fibers. Improved fat quality, reduced saturated fat, some increase in PUFAs from fish, for instance. And also quite a large reduction in, in salt, because this was a diet to accord with the dietary uh, Nordic nutrition recommendations. And if you look at the overall effects on the metabolic risk factors, there was quite pronounced effect, especially on the blood lipids, which were the uh, primary outcomes. Um, as you can see, about 20% reduction in LDL cholesterol. But also, uh, uh, blood pressure was quite markedly reduced, fasting insulin reduced, and also body weight reduced, uh, despite this was not uh, uh, weight loss trial, and that was probably due to the high amount of fiber and, and uh, low energy uh, dense uh, foods they were receiving. We also had a, it was also a, a subgroup uh, continue for, for additional uh, four weeks. So the first uh, 11 subjects continued, and in that group we saw, if anything, more 
uh, further risk re reduction in the risk factors. So we did not see, uh, did not um, suggest any any plateau plateauing of the effects after six weeks. And uh, this is, if you compare the, the Nordic diet, healthy Nordic diet, compared to the, this case, a Swedish reference population, so you can see this is much higher in, in the fruits and berries, legumes. Um, also in, in this study uh, here, it was not significantly increased in cereals, but that was partly due to the, the, there was very high intake overall in this population but an increase in, in fats and oils and fish, for instance, but also lowering of, of, of um, sweets and desserts and, and added sugars. And all the details we have described also in, in this paper, if you want to see more uh, how the diet and foods were composed in the Nordic diet. And we also asked if this we saw this rather pronounced effects on risk factors. If it would be enough to, to just advise um, or intervene with a healthy Nordic breakfast, and that had not been done. So we wanted to compare a healthy breakfast as the only intervention, compared with a, a controlled breakfast, only in a breakfast eaters. There have been studies looking at breakfast eaters compared to non-breakfast eaters, but this is. Uh, healthy Nordic uh, diet. So we used the, the, the basically the, the breakfast that we given in this Nord diet trial I just show you, and compared it uh, for, for in a parallel randomized control study for, for um, uh, 12 weeks was the intervention. So 79 uh, subjects were randomized, and very little dropout during these three months. Only one subject was lost to follow-up. <clears throat> and uh, what we saw, there was little change because we also measured glucose tolerance. We want to measure uh, glucose metabolism. There was no change in glucose tolerance in blood lipids or fasting glucose. And that was uh, a bit surprising, but still it, it's, it's, it's only um, changing or advising the breakfast. So that tells us that you need a much larger more of a dietary pattern approach, a larger intervention to, to achieve these effects rather than only uh, altering the diet. However, we saw a reduction in abnormal fat content, a significant, and we also saw a lowering of CRP. And this is quite interesting because you have no weight change. This is also isocaloric status, no weight change or difference between the groups in, in weight change. And uh, it was quite a robust uh, reduction in, in the CRP levels after the uh, three months of the on the Nordic breakfast, and the the, the other uh, study I would like to mention uh, uh, is the SIS diet consortium. SIS diet stands for uh, uh, systemic um, systems biology in dietary intervention court studies, and that is a as you can see a network with all the Nordic countries, <coughs> it was coordinated and, and uh, driven by, by the Finnish University of East in Finland. Matti Josetupa was the PI for this study, funded by Norforsk, the Nordic Minister of Health Council. Uh, and we wanted to do a more long-term study to, to look at the effects of a Nordic diet. And again, the, as in the previous trial, short-term trial, this was similar um, intervention with increasing cereals, fibers, vegetable fruits, typical from uh, Nordic origin. Rapeseed oil is the basic fat, and, and lower, uh, uh, lower red meats increase fish. As compared to a control diet, which in similar to the Predimed study, they received some products also in this control diet, so that was should represent an average Nordic diet. Uh, so this was a more normal uh, diet, and this was supposed to be the more healthy Nordic diet. Subjects with a metabolic syndrome were included, and this was a study with parallel, uh, two parallel groups with up to 24 
18 or 24 months of follow-up and a lot of measurements including adipose tissue biopsies and glucose tolerance tests before and after intervention. In this study there were some dropouts especially in the in the in the control group due to unwillingness to follow the control diet uh, so ending up with with uh, 96 in the healthy diet and uh, 73 subjects in the control diet after uh, 24 months oh sorry weeks um, the prime, one of the primary outcome was blood lipids, and here there was significant reductions, especially in um, LDL cholesterol, increase in HDL cholesterol, also APB redu was reduced in the, in the uh, end Nordic diet. There was, however, no um, improvement in glucose tolerance or, or glucose metabolism, as we can measure, which was uh, <laughs> A negative finding. <clears throat> but this is uh, it's important to remember this is an isocaloric study. No weight change occurred, no, no difference between the groups in weight. However, we also in this study saw some, some improvements or reduction in, in pro inflammatory marker. And this, this marker, interleukin 1 receptor antagonist, is quite interesting because it's increased several years before the onset of diabetes. Frank Hu and others have shown that, that this is elevated six, six years before you develop diabetes. So it's an interesting marker of, of developing type 2 diabetes. And this marker was reduced or, or prevented by the, by the Nordic diet. And in line with that, we also in the biopsies, we, we measured doing microglobal transcriptomic uh, analysis, we, we measured pro-inflammatory gene expression and saw that, that, that several genes, uh, inflammatory genes in adipose tissue was, was down-regulated after the um, Nordic diet uh, for, for three months, uh, th uh, six months as compared to the, to the control diet, the adipose tissue of the controlled subjects. And this, again, was independent of, of body weight changes. It's, it's well known that if you reduce body weight, you, you improve uh, systemic inflammation. I will be quick now. Um, this is a, also a, a subgroup analysis from, from this uh, cyst diet study, where we used the biomarker approach, serum biomarkers, to capture uh, different aspects of the diet, whole grains, alkyl resorcinols in plasma, fatty acids in phospholipids and beta-carotene to capture those uh, subjects who were compliant compared to those non-compliant. And, <clears throat> and here we see that the, the most compliant and the more compliant subjects had, a, might, as expected in a way, but mo much more clear reductions in blood lipids using this, uh, uh, defining them according to, to biomarker status. If they change in, in these biomarkers, that should change according to the dietary uh, intervention. And also blood pressure was almost twice as large reduction in the systolic um, blood pressure in the most compliant subjects after the, after the um, uh, Nordic diet compared, compared to the control diet. And finally, another study, latest study uh, conducted is a Danish study. It's a large, also large project called the New Nordic Diets. It's also very, quite similar to the other um, uh, diets I showed you, with high intake of vegetables, Nordic-based uh, vegetables, root vegetables, and uh, <clears throat> also high in fish in, in whole grains and. Uh, Lower in meat uh, and um, not so much change in their products. So, so again, a, a quite plant-based uh, diet. And and this was also ad libitum li diet, and and there was pronounced effects on body weight reduction after 26 weeks. So this was more more than half year intervention, as compared to the control. Uh, 
And uh, this was also accompanied by, by quite robust reduction in, in the, in the um, blood pressure in line with the previous study. And this is uh, a study that was conducted, the uh, uh, investigation was on Astrup, uh, and this, uh, there have been other uh, sub uh, papers of this studies, study also recently. They did a subgroup analysis on patients or subjects with prediabetes, and in those in the, that subgroup they saw uh, significant reductions in in, in the fast insulin markers of insulin sensitivity. However, as you can see, there's 14 subjects in the Nordic diet, and this is control only five. So I think we need to be a bit careful uh, when we look at this data. But still, there was. Uh, indicating beneficial effects on, on insulin sensitivity. And finally, there have been a few large court studies where you use this healthy Nordic food index, which is a scoring um, index where you, where you have a root vegetables, fish, whole grain rye, whole grain oats, apples and pears and cabbage as the, as the key uh, foods. So you, the higher you consume, the, the, the higher scoring. So there's no negative scoring as you have in some, some other uh, health indexes, for instance. Uh, so this is only, these are the only foods based, uh, included in the scoring. But in one Danish cohort and one Swedish cohort of, as you can see, quite large cohort, prospective cohort studies, high adherence to this uh, health and Nordic food index uh, was inversely related to, to all cause mortality of the uh, adjustment for, for several confounders. So to summarize, healthy Nordic diets are pl pl mainly plant-based diets, uh, high in local vegetable legumes, fruits, berries, but also uh, a lot of fatty fish and, and, uh, and some dairy foods. And these foods, that these diets that have been tested have mainly accorded with uh, nutrition guidelines. And the, the ad libitum trials show more pronounced effects, and partly because the weight loss probably mediated some of these reduction in risk factors. But not all the risk factors seem to be mediated by weight loss. And we still lack intervention studies of, no, of Nordic diet in, on diabetes prevention. And uh, that's, that could be a, f a future topic, of course. So I thank you for this. Thank you.